I'm Maria Cabanillas. I'm an oncologic endocrinologist and I work at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And my specialty is thyroid cancer. There are four approved therapies for thyroid cancer. Two of them are approved for differentiated thyroid cancer, which includes papillary thyroid cancer, follicular thyroid cancer, herthal cell thyroid cancers, and poorly differentiated thyroid cancer. Um, the drugs that are approved for differentiated thyroid cancer are serafinib and lenvatinib, also called Nexavar and Lenvima. The drugs that are approved for medullary thyroid cancer are Vandetinib, also called Caprelsa, and um, Cabozantinib, which is Cometric. Uh, there are no approved drugs for anaplastic thyroid cancer at this time. So we call these these class of drugs, the ones that are, you know, lenvatinib, serafinib, vandetinib, and cabozantinib, we call them tyrosine kinase inhibitors or TKIs. And we consider this a form of chemotherapy, although it is um, a little different from what usually people think of chemotherapy. These are medications that the patient takes by mouth at home. They take them every day. And they have different side effects from the usual chemotherapy that you think of, um, for, for example, for breast cancer. So um, we try to limit uh, these chemotherapies to patients who truly need them. The reason that we do that is because we're not able to cure patients with these drugs at this time, and they have side effects. Some of them uh, can, be, um, can really diminish the quality of life of the patient, and therefore we restrict these drugs to patients who really need them. And how do we know the patient really needs this? Well, usually patients whose thyroid cancer is getting worse, and you can't take the patient to surgery and just remove it. Um, or you can't radiate it to make it stop growing. And the disease looks like if you don't do something about it, will cause some harm to the patient. For example, um, a patient who has um, a, a, a metastasis to the bone, for example, in the arm that, that maybe if you don't treat them, then, the, then they'll lose function of the arm. Um, we would usually radiate those patients first, but then sometimes those patients still continue to have problems and need treatment. Another example is um, a tumor that is located very close to the trachea that if it breaks into the trachea could cause bleeding. So, um, so these are the types of patients that we try and restrict these chemotherapies to. These are very exciting times for thyroid cancer. Uh, there are lots of different treatments on the horizon. Uh, we have so far in, for differentiated thyroid cancer, um, have studied uh, the BRAF inhibitors for patients who have a BRAF mutation. Now these patients usually have papillary thyroid cancer uh, with a BRAF mutation, and we've studied the drug vemurafenib in those patients. Um, recently published the results of that with uh, about a 33% response rate in those patients. Um, other drugs that have been studied for BRAF mutated papillary cancer is, uh, is dabrafenib. And in anaplastic thyroid cancer, we're studying the combination of dabrafenib plus trametinib in patients who have a BRAF mutation in their anaplastic thyroid cancer tumors. So, you know, those seem very promising for, for those groups of patients. Unfortunately, not all patients have a BRAF mutation. So what are we doing for those patients? Well, uh, we're currently uh, trying to open a study through ITOG, the International Thyroid Oncology Organization, Oncology Group. Um, with lenvatinib plus an immunotherapy called pembrolizumab. Um, and that's going to be for patients with differentiated thyroid cancer, so that should be a very exciting study. It will be for patients who've never been on lenvatinib before and also patients who've been on lenvatinib but it's stopped working for them. Uh, for uh, medullary thyroid cancer, we're going to be studying very soon the selective RET inhibitors. So um, pa many patients with medullary thyroid cancer have a RET mutation in their tumor. And for those patients, uh, we're interested in studying how these very selective RET inhibitors, um, if they'll help the patient and cause less uh, toxicity, fewer you know, side effects from the, from the chemotherapy. And then finally, for anaplastic thyroid cancer, we have actually a lot going on, surprisingly. Uh, anaplastic thyroid cancer is a very aggressive type of thyroid cancer. And, um, and you know, until very recently, we hadn't really 
had any good therapies for these patients. Again, like I said, we're studying dabrafenib plus trametinib in these patients. Um, and at MD Anderson, we're going to be opening a trial with, that combines these, uh, these TKIs or, or, or kinase inhibitors, um, such as BRAF inhibitors um, and uh, uh, MEK inhibitors, uh, VEGF receptor inhibitors, in combination up front with immunotherapy. Uh, to see if the combinations of drugs will help to keep patients alive longer. Oh, one more thing that I forgot, actually, it's a very important study that we're doing in patients who have differentiated thyroid cancer. Um, so patients with differentiated thyroid cancer who have, you know, metastatic disease, disease that has left the neck is now in other places, one, of, one very good therapy when it works is radioactive iodine. However, a lot of patients no longer take up radioactive iodine. So what we're doing is trying to study if we can give one of these, these chemotherapies, the one that we're studying right now is selumetinib, to patients who don't take up enough radioiodine to really kill the metastases. Um, we give them this drug before giving them radioiodine to see if we can restore that radioiodine uptake. We call that redifferentiation therapy. Um, for this clinical trial in particular with selumetinib, all patients will get radioactive iodine. Um, half the patients will get selumetinib and the other half will get a placebo drug, a sugar pill, so that we can compare and see if there's a difference in how much patients are, are how much radioiodine the patient is able to, to incorporate into those tumors.